morning. Welcome to church. Have you ever noticed how Jesus wasn't afraid to talk to anyone when he was on earth? Whether it was a hated tax collector, a woman of dubious reputation at a well, a religious leader, a simple fisherman, or a farmer. He spoke to everyone. He, he describes it like this in a parable. You can read about it in Matthew chapter 1, 13. I'm going to read verses 1 to 9. That same day, Jesus went out of the house and sat by the lake. Such large crowds gathered round him that he got into a boat and sat in it, while all the people stood on the shore. Then he told them many things in parables, saying, A farmer went out to sow his seed. As he was scattering the seed, some fell along the path, and the birds came and ate it. Some fell on rocky places where it did not have much soil. It sprang up quickly because the soil was shallow. But when the sun came up, the plants were scorched, and they withered because they had no root. Other seed fell among thorns, which grew up and choked the plants. Still other seed fell on good soil, where it produced a crop, a hundred, sixty, Thirty times what was sown. Whoever has ears, let them hear. The people struggled with this and didn't really understand, including the disciples. They didn't get it either. And later on, they say to him, can you tell us what that meant? We didn't get it. And in verse 19, Jesus says this. When anyone hears the message about the kingdom and does not understand it, the evil one comes and snatches it away what was sown in their heart. This is a seed sown along the path. The seed falling on rocky ground refers to someone who hears the word and at once receives it with joy. But since they have no root, they last only a short time. When trouble or persecution comes because of the word, they quickly fall away. The seed falling among the thorns refers to someone who hears the, hears the word, but the worries of this life and the deceitfulness of wealth choke the word, making it unfruitful. But the seed falling on good soil refers to someone who hears the word and understands it. This is the one who produces a crop yielding 100, 60, or 30 times what was sown. I've always thought it was curious how the sower in this, pa in this parable scattered his seed everywhere. Jesus is saying he wasn't picky. The farmer just spread his seed everywhere he could. It, it would be like today if you got your John Deere out and hooked up the air seeder to the back and started driving down the Trans-Canada Highway, seeding away, expecting to get a harvest. A friend of mine works for an organization that runs a summer camp just outside of Thunder Bay. They had a volunteer team come up one time from the States to help with spring cleanup. And the American team noticed a rock sticking up from the ground and being good Midwestern farmer stock, they wanted to get rid of that rock, get it out of the way. It's a waste of time, they were told. That's a big rock. No, no, we can do it. We'll just dig around it till we get to the edge and then get something under it and we can shift it. You do know this is Northern Ontario, right? And the Northern Ontario is Cambrian Shield country, which, you know, that piece of rock that you see is actually part of the Canadian Shield, which is an exposed part of the bedrock that's the core of the North American continent. It's going to take you a long time to dig around that rock. Now imagine trying to plant corn or wheat or canola on northern Ontario bedrock. But that's what the sower in this parable does. And Jesus modeled that. He talked to everyone. Even though as the Son of God, he knew what condition their heart was in. The sower in this parable is literally scattering, scattering his seed everywhere. And it tells me that our job, your job, my job, is not to try to predetermine the condition of the soil of the person we're talking to. Our job is is to sow some speed, to scatter it, to talk to the person in front of us. Now, 
sowing seed starts with being a credible source. When we first started pastoring, we lived in a small town, about 3,500 people. And there was this one house, I can remember it well. You'd come around a corner and, and you would notice, that anybody would notice this house. The first thing you might see would be a big sign saying, yard sale today. For the three years we lived there, there was a yard sale today, every day, for three years. And, that, and if you didn't see the sign, what you definitely would see would be the yard, or the lack thereof, because you couldn't see the yard for all the stuff that was in it. There was a little path that made it from the road to the front door of the house, but everywhere was just full of stuff. It kind of looked like a tornado had sucked up the contents of a second-hand store and a junkyard and jumbled it all together and dropped it on this person's property. There was no rhyme or reason. There was no order. It was, quite frankly, a mess. And you wouldn't go to that person and expect them to give you Marie Kondo level advice on how to organize your life. Or get landscaping tips. They just weren't a credible source for being neat and tidy. Are you and I a credible source for Jesus making a difference in our lives? I don't mean that we're supposed to be perfect. Far from it. None of us are. The only perfect person I know is Jesus. But we should have some of our ducks in order. A credible source. Sowing seeds is being a credible source, and sowing seeds needs preparation. Can you share your story of who you were before Jesus and who you were after Jesus in just a few sentences? 40 seconds? Here's mine. I was born and raised going to church. In my late teens and early 20s, I walked away from Jesus, wanting to live my own life. And I made a mess. It was only when I rededicated my life to Jesus that my life started to have meaning and purpose. See, nobody has the time to listen to a 40-minute story, but they can listen to a couple of sentences. And if their interest is piqued, they may, may very well ask for more. Can you tell me more about that? Sowing seeds is being a credible source. Sowing seeds is being prepared. And sowing seeds is answering questions. A while ago, we had a contractor at our house doing some work in our bathroom, doing some renovations and we got talking because I was working from home and um, talked about how I worked in construction way back in the day and, and he asked me how do you go from being a contractor to being a pastor and that led to a half hour conversation about the call of God and faith be prepared to ask questions when you're asked don't deflect don't ignore it don't don't just brush, off, brush it off. You've been asked, and you have permission to answer. 1 Peter 3.1 says, Honor Christ, and let him be Lord of your life. Always be ready to give an answer when someone asks you about your hope. Sowing seeds is being a credible source. Sowing seeds is being prepared. Sowing seeds is answering questions. Sowing seeds is talking the person in front of you. Who needs to hear? Everyone. Romans 10 14 says, How can people have faith in the Lord and ask Him to save them if they have never heard about Him? And how can they hear unless someone tells them? The sower in the parable scattered their seed everywhere, and we need to as well. It can be as simple as liking and sharing this video. It can be uh, your neighbor telling you about a hard time they're going through and you offering to pray for them right then and there, quickly and quietly. Nobody wants long and loud. But can I pray for you quickly and quietly? And then following up, I prayed for you. How are you feeling? How is that going? How is that situation working out? It can, be will, it can be as simple as being willing to answer people's questions about your faith when you're asked. It's to be willing to scatter the seed of the gospel into the lives of the people 
that God places in front of you. It's not our job to determine what kind of soil they are. It's our job to scatter the seed of the gospel with abandon on the hard places, the rocky places, the thorny places, and the rich, bountiful soil places. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, move in our hearts today that we as believers will be willing to scatter our seed, to be willing to do a little bit of, to be doing the work in our lives and required to be credible sources, willing to prepare ourselves to be able to share our story quickly, being willing to answer any question that we're asked, being willing to speak to the person in front of us. Holy Spirit, move in our hearts. And Lord, remind us of this prayer, of this moment, of this time where we've been talking about this in the coming days when somebody comes before us. We remember, Holy Spirit, remind us to scatter seed. And Lord, we know that you have promised us that where your name is lifted up, you will draw all people to you. We will scatter the seed. You will give the increase. Lord, move in our hearts, move in our minds. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you for being with us this morning. Thank you for being part of this church online. See you on Monday.